Hey folks, uh, this is Mr. Math Blog, and this lesson is uh, angle bisectors of a triangle. This is our angle symbol, and this is our triangle symbol, and this is the first part of module 15.5, and it's it's pretty much the most part of it. In the next part, we're going to do um, the five ways to prove triangles congruent, because that just somehow appears, so this textbook's a little awkward. And don't forget, all your lessons can be found at this groovy website, MrMathBlog.com. So if we go there... You'll see that uh, site right there. This is an integrated math two link. So we'll go there, click that, and it's going to get loaded right down there below the perpendicular bisectors. So the perpendicular bisectors gave us what was called the circumcircle, the circumcenter of the circumcircle that circumscribes the triangle. Here we're going to do the angle bisectors, and it's going to give us the in center. All right, so anyway, so how can we use the angle bisectors to find the point that is equidistant from all the sides of the triangle? Okay, and you're thinking, what the heck? I'll show you. So angle bisectors of triangles, module 15.5. So a circle that is inscribed in a polygon if all the sides of the polygon are tangent to the circle. Remember, tangent means it makes a nice, uh, it just touches the outside of that right there. Okay, so here we have circle C that's inscribed in this quadrilateral right here, W, X, Y, Z. Okay, and so circles that are inscribed are called in circles right there. And this little point right here, in center. Okay, so C is called the in center. And so to find the in center of a triangle, then we construct the angle bisectors. All right, so we're going to use a straight edge and compass right here to construct the angle bisectors. Let me go ahead and grab my um, uh, my compass right here so we can uh, do this. I should have had this up already. All right, and then what we're going to do first is we're going to construct um, uh, uh, the angle bisector of angle, angle P first. Okay, so I'm going to slide this compass down right here and put the pointy on P. And it doesn't matter what size compass opening it is. You just got to make a compass opening and strike both sides of the angle right there. Okay, all right, so let's go ahead and do, the, uh, do that. There we are right there. And then from... Uh, from this point right here, and I lost my P, I noticed, but uh, my, my letter P, uh, I'm going to put pointy right there and put pointy right there, and I'm going to make some more arcs out here. Now, um, since the circle is going to be inscribed inside of here, I'm going to make these second arcs a little bit larger, okay? So what I'm going to do, slide this up. I'm going to put pointy right there. i got to get my head closer so I can see it, okay? And I'm going to stretch this out just a little bit. Now, you don't have to do that, you guys. It's just I want to keep my arcs away from my circle that's going to go on the inside. But I definitely need these two guys so I can put pointy right here, and then I'll put pointy right here. And so so whatever opening this is, it's got to be the same from here and here. Okay, so let's scribe an arc out here. Okay, then we'll take the compass and we'll put it right down there and we'll do the same thing. We'll scribe an arc right there and they just got to intersect out there. Okay, so that point of intersection, this point right here, we're going to get a straight edge and connect it right there. Okay, so what we've done is we've created an angle bisector of this angle P outside of there, okay? All right, now we're going to do angle R. So let's go ahead and do the same thing with uh, angle R, okay? So, uh, so I'm going to go ahead and do this little small arc first from R. Let me close that up just a little bit, all right? And uh, I'm going to put this over here, and I'm going to do this arc from R, okay? And I think I did it a little bit... Uh, farther away there. That's all right. Same thing. And then um, uh, and then we're going to take uh, our compass and we're going to put it out here. And again, I'm going to open it up so it's just outside of the triangle So um, uh, because my circle is going to go inside. Okay, so I'm going to arc out here. All right, so let me go ahead and do that. And then whatever compass opening that was, it has to be the same when I take it over here. We're going to do that and then arc it again. Uh, right over here and then where these uh, arcs intersect we're going to connect this point uh, with these guys right there so let me move this out of the way okay all right so there we go connect those guys up and then this right here where they intersect is our in center of the in circle that we're going to inscribe inside of here okay 
All right, so we can construct the angle bisector of this angle, but we d we know it's going to go through that point right there. So we don't even need to. If I wanted to, it would, if I constructed the angle bisector of angle Q, it would go right through there. Do you remember that name when uh, three lines intersect in the same spot? It starts with the C. Somebody said this morning circumference. I said no, that's that's a parameter around a circle. It's um, that it means they're concurrent, and so this point is the point of concurrency right here. Okay, C O N C U R R E N T. That was the last lesson. Anyways, okay, so that's the center of my in circle. So now we're going to put um, uh, the point on C. Okay, and we're going to we're going to uh, open up the compass so it goes, uh, it just touches a side, okay? So I'm not going to put pencily over here. I'm not going to put it over here. I'm going to put pencily straight down. So if you can imagine a, a perpendicular segment that goes straight down, okay? That's where I want to put pencily, okay? So um, let's see if I can do that. So I'm going to close it up and... Does that look like it would be a right angle if we did that right there, straight down? Does it, can you see a right angle? It has to be a right angle, okay? And if it is, all right, I'm going to do this in green here. So if it is, then it'll make a nice, perfect in-circle. Whoops, I missed it just a little bit right there. I did pretty good in class today. In fact, I did a good one in class. So that's a pretty good one right there. All right, so... Here's the in-center theorem. I'm done with this for right now, okay? You're going to need this for your assignment tonight, by the way. All right, so the angle bisectors of a triangle intersect at a point that is equidistant from the sides of the triangle. Okay, what does that mean? Okay, what that means is this, you guys, is if, if these are the angle bisectors, and see these red markings show me that this angle equals this angle, so that means this is the angle bisector. These two blue guys means that this is the angle bisector, means that these two guys are equal. And these three green guys, those guys are equal. If you're colorblind like my son, uh, you wouldn't be able to see that green. It would look brown or black or same with this and same with that. So anyway, uh, and so, so it, uh, these three markings right here just tells me that these two angles are equal right here. So that just means that this is the angle bisector. So if they are the angle bisectors, then this theorem says then the distance from this point to this side over here, remember the distance from a point to a side is the right angle it makes a straight line that goes perpendicularly. So it just says that those three distances are equal to each other. So the perpendicular distance from here is equal to the perpendicular distance to this side and same with this side right there, okay? It has to be the right angle. So if it, where the angle bisectors intersect, this is the in-center. It's the in-center of the in-circle that would go inside this triangle right here. And this, this would be a radius of the circle. This would be a radius of a circle. This would be a radius of a circle. Okay, yesterday's lesson was the perpendicular bisectors, and that gave us the circle on the outside, the circumcircle. Okay, so that meant uh, on the perpendicular bisectors, that meant um, uh, that the circumcenter was equidistant to the vertices. But here, this is the in-center. The in-center is formed by these angle bisectors. So it means that that distance is going to equal that distance is going to equal that distance. They're just the radius of this in-circle that would be inscribed in the triangle right there. Okay? All right. So here we go. JV and KV are angle bisectors. Okay? So if this is 19, then that's 19 right there. Find each measure. Okay. So this one says find the distance from V to KL. Okay. Well, if these are the angle bisectors, then this would be the in center of the in circle that would go around. So this would be a circle going around right here, and this would be a radius of the circle. So this radius is going to equal this radius right here. So the distance from this point to this line is a perpendicular segment. It's going to be the same as that 7.3 right there. So uh, the distance is going to be 7.3. Same to this side here. The distance from V to JL is also uh, 7.3 right there. It's just the radius of the in circle. All right, so here this one says find the measure of angle VKL. Okay, so VKL is this little dude right here. V K, K, uh, uh, L, sorry, is this one here, V, K, 
KL, okay? So, so let's do this right here, you guys, okay? Since this is the angle bisector, then that's 19 and that's 19 right there. If I put them together, it gets me 38, okay? So there's my 38. And then I'm going to use the triangle sum theorem. These three angles add up to 180. I can figure out that this angle right here is uh, 36 right there. Okay, so that's 36. And since this is an angle bisector, I'm going to bisect that 36 in half and tell you that uh, both of these two angles are going to be 18 and 18. Okay, so that's 18 and so is that 18. So I got the 18 on the wrong side, but it's VKL. So this is 18 also. So the answer is 18, okay? All right, so the angle bisector theorem says if a point lies on the bisector of an angle, okay, so here's a point that's lying on this angle bisector. Can you see that this side equals this side or this angle equals this angle? So this is an angle bisector. Here's point C on the angle bisector. What this theorem says is that that point is equidistant to the sides of the angles. Remember, the distance from this point to this side is a perpendicular segment. The distance from this point to this side is a perpendicular segment. So it just says that um, AC would equal BC. Okay, so it has to be the perpendiculars. You got to have the right angles. If it's on the angle bisector, then this point is the same distance away, perpendicular distance away to the sides of the angle. Okay, and the converse says this: if a point is on the interior angle and it's equidistant to the side, so this says this right here. It's equidistant. This side equals this side. Yummy donuts. Mm. So uh, let's see. So if uh, this point is equidistant to the sides of the angle, then it's going to be the reverse of this. Then it has to be on the angle bisector. Up here it says if it's on the angle bisector, then it's equidistant. This says if it's equidistant, then it's on the angle bisector right there. Okay, so that means uh, that that it has to lie on that angle bisector. Okay, so the pictures look the same. Uh, they're just kind of vice versa. All right, here's the, I told my kids today, this is so easy, it's frustrating, okay? So find uh, the measure of LM. Okay, so here, this these markings tell me it's the angle bisector. These right angles tell me that these distances are the distance from M to the side and M to the side. Well, they're equal. If that's 12.8, that's going to be 12.8 also, okay? All right, number two. Okay, so, so these 74s, the only thing I needed those 74s were to just tell me that this is congruent to this. And since they're right angles, it's the distance from this point to this side and the distance from this point to this side are congruent to each other. Okay, which just uh, means that this has to be the angle bisector. Okay, now they tell me that ABC is 112, so we're going to cut that in half. And so when we cut it in half right there, the angle bisector theorem says we can cut that 112 in half. So that means each one of those angles has to be 56 degrees right there. Okay. All right. So if you are in uh, uh, my class or our class, that would be your homework assignment. Take care.